When it's about family, people usually do whatever it takes to keep their loved ones safe. Add some military experience into the mix, and you've got a whole new level of capability. Take Noam Tabone, a retired Israeli major general who used to lead the Israeli paratroopers, and who took charge of rescuing his family himself. On October 7, 2023, Noam Tabone received the news that his son, Amir Tabone, and his entire family were trapped in Nahal Oz. Amir's wife, Miri, awoke to the unsettling sound of a rocket. The parents quickly went to check on their daughters, finding them sound asleep behind a reinforced concrete wall. As the family hid, they could hear gunshots and people yelling in Arabic. Amir, who worked for a local paper, texted his work buddies to find out what was really happening. Gunfire pierced through the living room window, and it seemed like they're inside the house. Amir, grasping the enormity of the situation and realizing that no help was on the way, made a call to his father. Noam told them to stay hidden in the safe room while he and his wife went to help. They made a quick exit from Tel Aviv, packing only a handgun and sped south with a mission to save their family. On the way to Nahal Laws, they got stopped twice at checkpoints and were told they couldn't go any farther south. But the two ignored the instructions, first going through a field and then pushing through the second checkpoint. As they journeyed through the chaos, they saw cars in flames, bodies scattered across the road, and people running for their lives. In the midst of the chaos, a man and a woman sprinted desperately toward them, bringing their vehicle to a halt, pleading for help. They were coming from the tragic Reem Music Festival incident, where at least 260 lives were lost, thousands sought refuge, some on foot and others, like the couple, making their escape in cars. Gnome stopped and helped them to a safe zone, despite their own family's increasing desperation in Neha Laws. While huddled in their secure room, Amir could hear screams and neighbors being dragged away. Some of these people are still being held captive in the Gaza Strip. On the way, Noam and his wife encountered a group of Israeli soldiers standing in the middle of the road, seemingly waiting for orders. But they had lost contact with their commanders. One of the soldiers agreed to join him and accompanied him to Nahal Laws. Concerned about the potential risks, they decided to leave Noam's wife at a roadside shelter and continued on their journey without her. Noam Tabon picked up a gun and a helmet from one of the injured soldiers who were evacuated. At the entrance to Nahal Oz, they witnessed Hamas militants attacking Israeli special forces. Noam and the soldier who joined him exited the car and assisted the military in neutralizing the militants. By then, his family had been stuck in the shelter room for hours. The cell phone had run out of battery, leaving them in the dark about Noam's whereabouts. All the while, the unsettling sounds of gunfire echoed nearby. Noam crossed paths with other Israeli Defense Force soldiers. The troops then divided the area, each unit taking on responsibilities for reconnaissance and clearing. Noam joined a special forces group, navigating from house to house. In the course of their mission, they neutralized multiple Hamas militants and rescued numerous residents who had been confined to their secure shelters for 10 hours straight without electricity and much of them without food or water. The final hour in the shelter proved to be the most challenging. The air was stifling, the darkness felt oppressive, and the children grew increasingly anxious. The only source of comfort for them was the reassurance that their grandfather was already in close proximity. The soldiers began moving from house to house, checking for militants and reassuring those confined to their shelters that the Israeli Defense Force had arrived. At 4 p.m., there was a knock on the window of Amir's house, followed by a voice they instantly recognized. It was Noam Tibon. They emerged from their shelter with a sense of relief, tears streaming down their faces. However, the happiness was short-lived, as more and more families gathered at their place. In the next hours, their home transformed into a makeshift field headquarters. Soldiers entered and exited, escorting injured neighbors, 
families whose homes had been breached, and elderly individuals who preferred not to be left alone. They uncovered the harsh reality of the horrors that transpired that day. The casualties, the wounded, and those who disappeared. The full extent of the disaster hit home. Right outside their house, they came face to face with the bodies of five militants, one of them still gripping a grenade launcher. On Saturday night, the survivors were relocated to Mishmar Haimek in northern Israel. Israel reported 1,300 casualties resulting from Hamas, including raids, rocket barrages, and other incidents that commenced on October 7. In response, Israel conducted counterattacks with airstrikes in Gaza, resulting in the loss of lives for at least 1,900 Palestinians. But let us know what you think in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.